Well, hey everyone, I'm Maddie with Anime Fire, and today we are talking to voice actor Brian Beacock. How are you today? I'm very well. Nice to be here with you. Yeah, we're so happy to have you here. Um, now, you are not only the voice of um, Yumichika in Bleach, you do uh, Monokuma, um, ta uh, Takedo in Digimon, but you didn't start out as a voice actor. You have also done TV and film, you've done theater. What was your journey like transitioning from that into voice acting? Really crazy. I mean, I never even thought of voice acting as a career. I I obviously, when I grew up, I was watching Bugs Bunny and all that stuff. Those were my favorite shows. I wasn't really an anime person. And when I was a kid, anime was Speed Racer. And that just, it wasn't it wasn't my speed, right? So uh, I wanted to be a TV star. I wanted to be in movies. So I was doing a lot of plays and um, singing and dancing and playing the piano and all that stuff. And so I, I got a show called Les Miserables. The musical, the Broadway musical, I did the the second mm -hmm. national tour of Les Mis. And once that ended and I got my union card, I thought, well, now I can move to L.A. and become a TV star. Of course, no one in L.A. cares about the fact that you were in <laughs> Les Mis. No one cares, right? So I started doing, I started doing TV and, and film, just little bits and pieces. And um, to, to make ends meet, I worked at Universal Studios. I sang and danced in the Beetlejuice show. Um, and doing a lot of theater and meeting a lot of people. And actually, it was at Beetlejuice that I met Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who you guys may or may not know as a voice actor. Uh, Darren Norris, who does Fairly Odd Parents, and he's been in a lot of an um, um, animation as well. Uh, he was our Beetlejuice. Mary Elizabeth was the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, and so they saw me years later do a one-man show uh, where I played 38 different people. It was wow. a play called Fully Committed. Uh, it was on Broadway, and then it came to L.A. And so Mary came and saw me in that show, and she said, Hey, you obviously can do voices. There's a <laughs> show I want you to audition for, and I think you're right for it, blah, blah, blah. So I auditioned for it, and that show was season three of Digimon, uh, Digimon Tamers. So I had no idea. I didn't know anything about anime. I didn't know anything about dubbing. But she, mm -hmm. she said, Well, you're, you're a good actor. So I'll just teach you the technical aspects um, of it. Um, oh, Wally Wingert was also in Beetlejuice with us. He does a lot of voiceovers as well. So um, a lot of people from Universal um, be became uh, voice actors. So Beetle, uh, excuse me, uh, Digimon started, and from that it was the complete snowballing effect of my career. Everything was because of, of Digimon, and that's why we are sitting here together, you and I today. Yeah. That's so cool. What an so, awesome yeah, so, journey. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I always say this, but I always thank Mary Elizabeth. I mean, she's mm -hmm. basically the one that gave me my start. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, now, we all know and love you as Octagawa um, in <laughs> Bungo Stray Dogs. Um, and that is currently airing right now with season five. Um, yeah. I know that the first season came out in 2016. So, it's been a while. But do oh you gosh. remember? Um, your reaction to getting cast as Octagawa? So because I am not a, a manga reader, and I'm also not an avid anime watcher, I, I'm, I am more so now that I've been in the world for, what, 20 years. Um, when I got cast in the show, I, I think I remember auditioning for it, but when I got cast in it, it really was like any other job that we as actors are excited about because we got a job, right? So mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about the show. I knew it was popular, which made me happy. Um, but I do know I, I Googled him and I went to, gosh, I guess Amazon Prime was still around then. Basically, <laughs> I, I was searching to see if there was any cosplay or any merchandise for the character. And of course there mm -hmm. was. Right. Yeah. There are no there are no Takato toys from Digimon. It's all about deal. <laughs> it's all about the Digimon, right? There there's no right. there's no walker from Durarara toys, right? Mm -hmm. So Octagawa was everywhere. So I thought, well, this is kind of awesome. Obviously he's he's important enough to have merchandise, right? So that excited mm -hmm. me. Um so I was just excited to have a job. However, I remember the first session and I remember the first scene with Octagawa. And I thought, wow, I mean, the last guy that I had played who was tough, obviously, um, was Yumichika. 
mm-hmm. from Bleach, right? Um, yeah. Octagawa. He was Octagawa was a was a different bird. He was just completely different. Uh, cold and cool and calm and in control and still sarcastic and dry. And so the minute I, I did that first episode, I was like, this is awesome. I am so lucky right now to have this. Char- Please don't let, let this character be only season one, right? Or only right, one episode. Yeah. Cause I had no idea. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I, I adore him. I hate season four. I hate that. he. <laughs> I absolutely, I haven't even watched season four. I hate it at that. I'll watch it. Oh, I'll watch it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it good? Was season four good? Season four was really good. Okay. Um, I, uh, you know, you 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 know me. For those of you who don't know me, I am a huge Bungo Stray Dogs fan. I cosplay like For eight sure. different characters. You know, I've got a <laughs> Carl did. the Raccoon tattoo on. Like, yes. it's, it's my it's my favorite. You know, um, and so watching season four was great. And I'm a manga reader, and I'm caught up. Cries, um, <laughs> but season four was great, and it was saddening because I had a feeling that we weren't going to see Octagawa in season four and that right. made me a little sad for you because I was like oh man I'm not going to get to hear Brian in this right um but it was great Keiju was fantastic they're all in- incredible incredible you should you should definitely binge it to catch up for season five absolutely awesome. I guess I will I guess I will bite the bullet <laughs> and get that uh that Crunchyroll subscription right yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's really good. So now, when you were Googling Octagawa and looking for cosplays and stuff, were you familiar with the Japanese literature, like the author of Octagawa at all, or did you find that in your search? So I obviously thought I was searching incorrectly. I was like, who is this author? Why do I keep getting this author? Uh, I right. didn't really get the details and and the really hip, cool Easter eggness of the show until I started recording it. And the engineer or the director uh, said, this is what the show isn't about, but this is what all the characters are based on. So that's when I learned of that. And I thought, well, this is so cool and hip because it really has nothing to do with the show, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's just there. It's just a little bit of uh, additional information. Kind of, it's very meta and it's very behind the scenes, you know. So, mm-hmm. in fact, there's people now that are reading all the literature uh, from yeah. these from these characters. I myself yeah. have not done it yet. Have you? Have you? Mm-hmm. Have you done a lot? Have you read a lot of them? I I started reading um, No Longer Human, uh-huh. um, but I have a hard time reading novels. Like I have Bungo Stray ah. Dogs Stormbringer light novel like halfway done. That's why manga is so nice for me to read because I I also have an eight year old. So sitting down to read oh. is <laughs> is not the easiest thing for me to do. Um, right. But I do. I would love to read the the novels eventually. Um, but I yeah. do know that when um, Asagiri was at Anime Expo, he said himself he had people coming to him like, "I became a literature professor because of your show. I yep. read all these books, and I'm an English major because of these characters." And it's really cool the impact of anime and manga that can have on people like that i agree and that and and that's kind of like the nth degree of of literature and 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 knowledge and reading and all that stuff but the Mm -hmm. impact of anime and manga is 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 so far reaching in a variety of ways you know uh, emotionally and and um creative and creating a, a wilder imagination all kinds of stuff i mean anime and i've realized this more going to conventions and meeting people but anime Mm -hmm. and manga and cosplay there's just such a place for it you know i mean there was always a place Mm -hmm. for it but it's it's so prevalent Mm -hmm. now and it's so important now and i'm just really grateful to be a part of it because it is changing lives and saving lives you Mm -hmm. know so yeah yeah. absolutely yeah so it's a cool show i'm very lucky i'm very lucky yes Yes. Yeah. And now you mentioned that when you first started voicing Octagawa, you noticed how like cool and like collected he was versus like the child you voice in Digimon or, you know, the very like flamboyant character in Bleach. Right. So how was shifting gears to voicing Octagawa different than voicing these other characters? Uh, it was nice, actually. I mean, I had a little bit, a little bit of practice with that, with with Yuma Chica, and also going in to do like video games. You know, you'll play like mm-hmm. you know fighter pilot number three or whatever. You know, <laughs> or pilot, no, fi- fighter pilot number three through seventeen, and they all have the same voice. Right. Um, yeah. So there's a little bit of seriousness in those kinds of characters, but uh, the 
the the level uh, of the writing with with Octagawa and the subtleties and of course he's such a like he's such a layered character peeling away the onion to see, to really get at his problems and and, and his right. history and his struggles and his pain um was great as an actor so it mm-hmm. really went back to all the stuff that I'd studied in school um because voice acting is just acting right yeah um with with your hands tied behind your back um, <laughs> with severe limitations. Uh, and I mean, so you can I act was, like this, right? <laughs> you can. Well, you can. You just can't do it with your voice. Right. Um, but it was just really, really thrilling to have someone who was, for the most part, controlled. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he went a little crazy. Uh, but for yeah. the most part, controlled. And yet inside, I just felt like he was rumbling, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just there's there's a lot going on. And some of the more of that rumbling and excitement came out in Bungo Stray Dogs one, obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the antithesis, Octagawa. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Lord. Yeah. Was it was one just like a blast to record like those it lines? Was, it was a blast, but it was so hard because <laughs> they they didn't really want us to pitch the voices up that much or make them kid like. There was a couple times I think when they showed them in school or flashbacks mm-hmm. or whatever, um, but for the most part they wanted the regular voices. So mm-hmm. seeing these little tiny people and then doing the regular <laughs> Octagawa voice was was right. very much like this, you know? Yeah, right. But I, yeah, I loved it, and so much of like my TikToks and so much of of the lore and the memes and all that stuff um, comes from Juan. You know, mm-hmm. not even from from the regular Bungo Stray Dogs. People are quoting lines from Juan all the time. Yes, yes, I do, I do. I quote, I love Juan. Juan is one of those that, like, if I need a good giggle, like, that's what I put on, right? Like, Octagawa going grocery shopping. Like, it's just, it's just Climbing, so... climbing in through the window. Yeah, constantly climbing through the window, eating Dazai's food to make sure it's not poisoned, like, taking the food from Atsushi with Rashomon. Like, it's just, it's oh, so, so good. light. Yeah, and it's so funny because I've had friends who are like, can I just watch Wan? And I'm like, no, you have to watch this original series. You have to watch Bungo Stray Dogs first yeah. before you can watch Wan because Wan is like, I think you and I talked about this at Pasadena. It's like a palate cleanser. Like, Completely. it's like, yeah, it's that, okay. On Ghost Ray Dogs was a lot. <laughs> right. And now we can shift into one. And it's also, it's like really, really uh, emotionally pleasing to see these characters that you've come to know and love or, or know and hate, to see them in a different <laughs> light and, and painted right. differently with a different brush. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, really, it's really fun. It's re- there, I hope there's going to yeah. be more of it. I hope they'll be. Yeah, I hope so too. I know they just they just released like another volume in English, so I'm wondering if that means more animation will will follow. That'd be really cool. Well, as always, (laughs) I will be the last to know. Oh man. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So why do you think fans find themselves relating to Octagawa's character? Gosh, um, I I think you're going to be able to answer this better than I, because um, <laughs> it's it's I think it's much deeper than oh he's got a cool look or you know that mm-hmm. <laughs> that wig is easy to find. Um, <laughs> I do think uh, his struggle of being recognized and being praised mm-hmm. and kind of maybe uh, um, being feeling left out and not being recognized for how strong he is and how powerful he is. It's just that kind of like all encompassing. Uh, self doubt and um, I, it's, he's just he leads kind of like a painful life, and he tries to cover it up by being strong, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's universal. I certainly have had that in my life. Yeah. Um, and it's odd though; it's got to be so strong as because how old is Octagawa? Is he in his? I think he's twenty. I think 2021 or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So he's still young. So he hasn't, he hasn't Mm -hmm. yet learned like me, like you just got to get over that. Um, (laughs) You know what I mean? And it is, you know, it is fantasy, but um, I just think that's an interesting character aspect, you know, that he just, Mm -hmm. he just struggles and, and so many people are struggling with, with wanting to be recognized or Mm -hmm. um, unrequited love or, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I think you nailed it. I think that's, that's told, that's, that's absolutely it. Yeah, that was, that's spot on. That's 
our sweet Octagawa. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And it is <laughs> He's so trying. opposite from me. I mean, I think I used to be that way. Right now, I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't care what people think. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can and that's care always, less. And, yeah. And that's always a good attitude to have, you know, to be yeah. confident in yourself. And I think as the series has gone on, we kind of see Octagawa growing in that direction a little bit um you know from season one where he's obviously like shouting at atsushi and he's like how come he chose you like i you know like you know he's so mad but then we get even in season three when they're finally like working together and atsushi's like does i acknowledge you and he like passes out right like at the end of season two when does calls him strong he falls over um (laughs) my idol said i was great and he just passes out (laughs) um so how how are you feeling about octagawa's growth and without spoiling anything because you and i know you and i know what's coming um how how do you feel about seeing that growth in his character I mean, I, I think it's definitely uh, maturing, and I think there's a level of acceptance. It's like the stages of grief, you know, denial, acceptance, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, I think he begrudgingly is working with Atsushi. Excuse me, wear tiger. Wear tiger. Um, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. But I think it's it's kind of like that. Oh, I, I, I don't want to be friends with my ex or, or this person spoke ill of me. I'll never talk to them again yet. Well, okay. Well, maybe I will. Like it's, it's a little bit of that kind of like acquiescing and, and learning to, to deal with things. Now, are there hidden agendas? I don't know. Um, will he explode? I don't know. Um, (laughs) but I definitely see, I definitely see like that shaking, shaking, shaking kind of like calming itself right Mm -hmm. yeah but is that pre-explosion or is this (laughs) or or is this a new personality i don't know right we'll have to wait and see yeah we will have to wait and see as we cry in spoilers Um, (laughs) (laughs) yeah so how would you describe bungo stray dogs and i feel like this question might be kind of difficult because as fans we kind of the, the running joke is, what is the plot of Bungo Stray Dogs? Like, I don't know if you've heard that joke, but it's like, what is the plot is kind of the silly thing. Um, how would you describe Bungo Stray Dogs to someone who's never watched it before? Uh, a, 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 battling, <laughs> a battling group of g- gangs. Um, <laughs> well, see, I keep wanting to say spoiler things, so I can't do it. Um, Aww, that's okay. <laughs> and then I confuse it with Juan, so I'm like, you know, um, right? Yeah. Pop, popping yeah. balloons and and planting lobster tails in the garden. Fish, the shrimp tails. <laughs> <laughs> shrimp tails. The, the um, sugar for the ants, you know. Oh, the sugar for the ants! Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. So when funny. he lets like, and then he lets the mosquito like drink his blood. He's just that's like, right. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll answer this question in a second, but I just want to talk about yeah. for people that haven't seen Juan, how Juan had that um, end credit sequence where they would walk along the wall, and I think we mm-hmm. may have talked about this before. And I don't know the episode. I don't know what happened in the episode, but there's one scene where was it Atsushi or was it Octagawa goes out on the wall and just sits there for the whole end credits, like sad, like like alone. Was it Atsushi or yeah. was it Octagawa? Was it you Atsushi? know what? I don't. Re- I, 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 it might have been Atsushi, but I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. I have to watch it again. It was yeah. so bizarre. It's like it was like the the traditional uh, like sitcoms of the eighties or the seventies, where like a main character would die, and so at the end, instead of like playing music or showing mm-hmm. credits, they would just have a black screen and they would just say, you know, directed by so and so. It's yeah. it was like on a very special episode of Bungo Stray Dogs One. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that just yeah. stood out to me as being such a really cool hip thing. And if you didn't watch the end credits, you wouldn't see it, right? But right. I just thought it was mm-hmm. the coolest thing. I watched it during the pandemic and I hadn't noticed it before. And I thought, wow. Yeah. This is so yeah. smart. And like pulling at the heartstrings of kids, which I love. Yes. Yeah, so, exactly. It, yeah. Back to describing the show. I'm going to let you describe the show. You tell me. <laughs> I I try to describe it as characters who have like supernatural abilities are working together in separate gangs to mm-hmm. keep the city of Yokohama safe. Oh. And the, 
and they're all named after people who are, who have been in like classic literature around the world. That's my plus Rompo. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> Rompo was a famous writer, but well, no, but his, his but his abilities, his, his ability, right, right. Well, and his then special, you have, his you know, special ability is to think that he has an ability. Yes, exactly. Yes. But season four, this is why you should watch season four as well, because you get that backstory of Fukuzawa meeting Ronpo and how he how Ronpo came to believe he had such an impressive ability. And it's Fukuzawa's fault, (laughs) but in a great way. It's funny because yeah. TikTok, Instagram, whatever, uh, Twitter, everyone's been talking about Rompo. So I assumed that it mm-hmm. was pretty pretty heavy in, in season four, yeah. his story. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, I'll check yeah. that out. I love, yeah. I love that description of, this, of the show. That's great. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll write it. it down and that'll be like, the, yes, go for it. It's all yours. <laughs> it is I'll all yours. I'll put it on my table at conventions. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. In case someone asks, who is this? You can have it ready. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So now shifting gears a little bit away from Bungo Stray Dogs, and I know you're not a huge anime watcher, um, but do you have a favorite anime? So it goes in it goes in stages. Um, I don't watch mm-hmm. a lot, but I have a huge list. And maybe you mm-hmm. can tell me if I'm on the right track or whether I should switch. <laughs> but I've, I've always, because uh, of the previews and stuff, I've always wanted to watch Castlevania. V- v- mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, I want to watch Attack on Titan because everyone says I should. Yeah. Um, I've still never seen Yuri on Ice, but I hear it's great. Yeah. Um, Death Note, I've never seen. I saw the movie, and so I, people... I haven't seen it. Hate, <laughs> you haven't seen it? I hear it's, it's good, <laughs> right? It seems creepy and fun. I like creepy. Yeah. I like yeah. creepy and scary and moody. So... Um, mm-hmm. I'm in uh, B stars, and I liked that because it wasn't your typical "Hey, I'm going to save the world" kind of anime. Like it was dark right. and, and weird. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. So what do you think? Um, I Yuri on Ice is great. Yuri on Ice is a comfort show for me and for a lot okay. of people because it's it's very happy. And there are like ups and downs, but it's a lot of like the character coming into his own like self confidence, um, and not necessarily needing someone else to give that to him, um, which is awesome. Um, and Mappa said we were getting a season two, and then just ghosted us forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, D- Death Note. I no hate to Death Note fans. Um, Nikki. My, my friend Nikki loves Death Note. Um, I've met some of the Death Note cast. They are great, amazing people. I don't have a desire to see it because I know what happens. Got I it. know the plot. I know what happens. So, I mean, if you like creepy and dark and mysterious, go for it. I say, I say watch it for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen Castlevania. It's on my list as well. Okay. Um, okay. And I've seen the first two seasons of Attack on Titan, and I stopped because I got distracted watching like 16,000 other things. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I'll go back to that one eventually. Um, But... (laughs) Oh, Chainsaw Man. Yes. That's a really good one. Yes. Highly. Yes. I highly recommend Chainsaw Man for sure. Okay. That one seems yes. fun. That one seems fun. But as yeah. you say, like, yeah. I'm trying to keep up on the shows that I'm in. I still haven't finished Bleach right. or Naruto, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so it's a lot, you know, and I and I still have to watch, you know, all my Project Runways and uh, Amazing yes. Races. So mm-hmm. who's got the time? Yeah, that's that's how I am too. I like, all right, I have my list of things to watch, and then I go back and start Bungo Stray Dogs from the beginning, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's why I, <laughs> that's why I haven't watched my other shows. <laughs> Bad time management. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so of all the characters that you voice, we're going to think about those. Which characters are going to see Barbie? Which ones are going to see? Oh, which ones are going to see Oppenheimer? And which ones are doing the double feature? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Octagawa is definitely going to Oppenheimer because bombs. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 100%. Um, Monokuma is going to see Barbie because he hears it's filled with pink blood. Perfect. Right? <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Barbie, pink, definitely, definitely Monokuma. And then right. seeing both, uh, let's, let's say 
Oh, gosh. Takato's seeing both <laughs> because he's chasing Gilman into all the theaters because Gilman's running after people's snacks. That makes most, of course, most sense. Of course. Yeah. That make, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Monokuma might want to see something about bombs, too. <laughs> he's going to do the double right. feature. <laughs> it's very possible. Yeah. It's very possible. Awesome. I loved all those answers about your characters. I feel like those are oh, so Thank spot you. on. But <laughs> part of me does feel like Octagawa would go see Barbie if Dazai asked him to go see Barbie. <laughs> or, or if he heard that Dazai was seeing Barbie, he would just sneak in, right? Right. Yeah, right. of course. Yeah. Rush yeah. him on some popcorn and sit down with totally. him. He'd, yeah, he'd enjoy it. He'd enjoy it. Yeah. Pink popcorn or whatever yep. it is there. Oh my gosh. Do you remember? <laughs> you don't even remember pink popcorn, do you? I don't. Pink popcorn was, it was a brick and they used to sell it like at ball games and stuff. And it was really gross. I mean, I'm sure it gave everyone cancer, <laughs> but it was oh, like no. this, it was like this hard brick of popcorn and they would sell it at, at, at ball games and stuff. It was called pink popcorn. I just remembered that. Oh my gosh. Oh my anyway, goodness. Yes. Barbie popcorn. <laughs> Bobby Barbie popcorn. We love it. Awesome. Well, that about wraps this up. Um, be sure to check out everything that Brian is in. Um, you know, we had some listed in this interview. Um, and until next time, we'll see you guys later.